Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Rocky Top Roundtable for this Florida week. And Tennessee coming off the loss at Arkansas, guys, an important game. I've kind of called it a must win since Sunday, and maybe that's an overreaction. But I think for this season, it certainly is a must win if you have those aspirations that Coach Heupel talked about post game. Yeah, I think you have to put a qualifier on why it's a must win because a lot of people hear the word must win. They think the coach is on the hot seat or you got that. And that's obviously not the case here. Correct. But if this team is going to have a chance to go postseason and do the things they want to do, they've got to win this game. And um, I said it on the Rocky Top Rewind, and I've said it all week. I mean, the playoff talk should stop for this team right now. This team needs to figure out how to, to offensively, Rob, to, to get into some kind of rhythm and get something going offensively. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, with, with what we saw at Arkansas, with, with the struggles, I mean, the, I guess the offensive issues are real. I think we all kind of thought maybe at Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma's really good on defense. That game was weird. Tennessee had it well in hand. Now, after your second SEC contest, I mean, that was not an anomaly. They have issues on offense, protect, starting, you know, protecting the passer. And, and, and you're right, I mean, the playoff talk, SEC championship game talk, all that needs to go in the back burner, figure out how to stay on the field and protect an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter. Eric, is it just as simple as the tackles? Because, I mean, most of the interior is the same that it has been under the Josh Heupel era. Um, but the tackles are different. Obviously, John Campbell's not 100%, got the, the, mm -hmm. the knee deal going on, and then Lance Hurd's new. Yeah, I mean, I'm no coach, but certainly it looked like Lance Hurd hadn't played football in a month. John Campbell did not have a good game. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I think it starts, I think it's simpler than that, right? I mean, when you see this three-stack look, it's when you're talking about struggling to protect your quarterback and pass protection, you got to get the IDs right, right? Because there were several plays, uh, two on those sacks where Javante Spragans and, and Dylan Sampson weren't on the same page. You had a blitzing guy come in there in that B gap, and he didn't know who was going to block him. And so I think breaking it down to who's got who in the ID, and that starts pre-snap, and that's why it's challenging on the road. That's why it's challenging uh, in an environment. That's why I think it's going to help this team coming home. So, yeah, the tackles have not played good. They didn't play well the other night. But I think it goes more than that in terms of just figuring out who's got who in, in pass sets. Let's start with Nico. Obviously, you know, number eight's got to be better. And, and, you know, a little bit of that starts with protection, but also starts with him processing and, and, and finding the right reads. Well, and, and I think teams are doing some things to this Tennessee offense that's making it a little bit hard. It's making it hard to read and ID those things like Eric was talking about there. I mean, Arkansas is not – I mean, Arkansas is going to play 4-2-5 this week when they play. They, they put in a, basically a brand-new defense for Tennessee, very similar to what Oklahoma did. Obviously, there's some issues – with Tennessee and managing that look. Now, when you get it right, you crease them for a long run. You have a wide open score of white that you miss. But, but I think that they've got to do some things to help uh, Nico, you know, process through some of the stuff pre-snap. And to me, that starts with trying to go fast. But you can't go fast if you're you know, if on an incomplete pass, on a penalty, on linemen not getting back to the line of scrimmage quick enough. I mean, it's hard to go fast right now. I think Tennessee needs to try to find some tempo to help Nico out. I think the tempo is key, even if it means that, you know, you give the other, you know, give your opponent more series because you're not taking as much time off the clock. I think, you know, it, you, you've got to do something that gets the defense playing on, the, you know, on its heels a little bit. Tennessee's not done that to this point against good competition. Well, and they would like to do that, Rob, but you can't do it when you don't execute. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I thought Saturday night, it, I mean, it, it felt like it was slow. I mean, sometimes if you're, you know, you're at the game, you, you know, you're working, you're, you're trying to, you know, keep, keep up and write things, you don't really notice. Saturday, it, it, you, you noticed. I mean, you felt like, it, you know, man, they're, they're taking a lot, a lot of time here. And, I mean, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. You know, the, the false starts, the pre-snap, you know, penalties and stuff, guys not getting back to the line, but it's just not operating smoothly or, or cleanly right now you know none of it not like you know even even last year at times as much as you know they struggled in the passing game you still you know they still clicked in the ground game none, i haven't felt that you know in, in the two sec games at all i was just going to say they need to win first down i don't have the numbers yeah, in front great. of me but tennessee has not been winning first down and when you're you know getting stuffed on first and ten or whatever and then you know having to change what you want to do on second down than having to slow things down on third down. I mean, it's simple, but I feel like this team needs to do a much better job on first down to help obviously move the sticks, but also get that tempo. It's hard to believe that, you know, Florida's not going to roll in here and try to mimic exactly what, you know, has you know been hurting Tennessee. You know, do the same thing Auburn or Arkansas did. You know, just, you know, roll that 3-3-5 three, three, and, 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 and roll. What does Tennessee do? Do they, do they put in new pass concepts with shorter routes? Because it seems like everything's either deep down the field or nothing. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know that Tennessee is, I mean, listen, it, here's the thing with the 3-3, three, three, the 3-3-5 three, three, or the three-stack stuff. This is not the first time that Josh Heupel's seen this. They dealt with it at UCF. Um, they, they've dealt with it at Tennessee. Um, they've got to manage it better, and I think tempo can help with that. Um, I think you've got to execute better, and I think sometimes you just got to go, I mean, just, just throw it. Like, just play. Yeah, just, I mean, just kind of go play. And Are they um, thinking too much? I think there's a little bit of, and, and I think that goes back to Rob's point, Eric, of it feels really slow. Mm-hmm. It felt slow on the field, but it looked like it was 1,000 miles an hour on the sideline. Yeah. You know, and, and so I, I think that Tennessee needs to just get back and just kind of go, all right, this is what we do. You want to do that? Okay, fine. We're, we're going to go throw it. And if you hit a couple of those, they'll get out of it pretty quick. You know, and, and Tennessee didn't take enough of those shots. I think sometimes you just got to say, we're going to take a shot and not be a, a seven-second crosser shot. I mean, a vertical just take a shot and see what happens. Yeah, and on some of those long-developing plays, you know, whenever, you know, Nico's getting pressured or it's taking a little time to – uh, to figure out. I mean, I, I'm kind of with what you said, Austin. I mean, you don't want to change your complete identity. There's wrinkles. You should go 12 personnel and everything. But also, I would cut the splits down a little bit. i kind of been on that all week, and I'm no offensive guru, but I'd cut the splits down, not get outside the numbers. I'd run some mesh underneath. I mean, the mesh gave Tennessee's linebackers issues early in that football game, but it feels like there's not a whole lot of intermediate right now in this passing game. Slants, mesh, um, you know, squirrels, stuff like that. I mean, I think those things can help Nico, and of course, it can help the evolution of this offense and tempo and, and return. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's played this offense for well over a decade, and the whole key to this offense is being spread sideline to sideline. They're not going to – they may condense it down with two tight ends because of the injuries, and that may squeeze it down a little bit, but I don't think they're going to suddenly go, okay, instead of being lined up at the sideline, we're going to move everything inside the numbers no. and, and squeeze it down and, and crowd it up in there. I get the point you're saying, mm-hmm. but I just don't think Josh Heupel is going to go – I don't think he sat there Sunday and go, you know what? I'm going to tear up the bulk of the fundamental <clears throat> foundations of our offense, yeah. and we're going to do something different this week. And maybe it's as simple as putting a tight end there, that H back, and just kind of put him behind the tackle a little bit. We've seen the double, the sniffer is what you call it. I'm not saying do that every single play, but I mean, you know, bringing in a, a number three receiver a little bit closer. I mean, I hear you with the splits, and I completely agree. That's kind of who this team <clears> is, but you, you got to do something to help out your quarterback because you're not protecting him right now. I want to see them move him. I think you got to move the pocket. Him. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I love what they did on first down mm-hmm. to start the game. I think I, I think you can do more of that. I think there's some things you can do there to help Nico get him a on play the play they never ran again. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't see it again. I'm not saying that they didn't, but you didn't see the production of it again. You know, and I would let Nico run. And I know everybody's like, well, if he gets hurt, the season's over. If you don't get your offense going, you're not going to win, and you're not going and anywhere the season's anyway. over anyway. And you he's know. getting hit already. So. Yeah, <laughs> he's getting hit a bunch in the pocket. So, I, Rob, I would use his legs – not a lot. I don't think he needs to carry it 15 times a game, but I think there are moments in time where they got to do well, some stuff with him in the game. Out, I mean, you can give him some easy throws. I mean, you cut the field down, you know, in, in half, and you know, I'm not saying Nico needs that 12 times a game, but every once in a while, you know, give him a, give him an easy one right. like that, and and you know, to your point about the you know the first play of the game the other night, you know, give him a couple of layups, and I think it's easy, it's easier to do that if you move the pocket and you know cut the field down. You look at, you know, Florida, you know, offensively, they've got a little bit more traction than they've had. I mean, they had 24 at the half of the night, and then they kind of went into stall mode, just get the thing triple zeros, didn't score again against UCF, one at 24-13. Obviously doing the two-quarterback system. Mm-hmm. How does Tennessee defend that, and how do they defend it well? Well, I mean, obviously when, you know, you got, you got one who's going to run more than the other. Sure. So you got you to deal with that. I think for Tennessee it's about fixing the middle of the field. You know, that was a bugaboo that creeped back up again. Tennessee had been really good defending the middle. Um, I thought they defended it well against Oklahoma. They did not defend it well against Arkansas. Uh, so I think defending the middle of the field. Um, and, and maybe Tennessee got caught up a little bit too much in, in tailing Green's legs, you know, and, and that, that limited or slowed down their, their pass rush a little bit. I don't know. Um, but they gotta get, they got to get after the quarterback. they got to get after Graham Mertz. Now, I love what James Pierce mm-hmm. did. I thought James mm-hmm. Pierce – found his game on Saturday night, you know, with the way that he played. He got held three or four times. They need that from James Pierce Saturday night because that changes what they can do up front as well. So um, I think they just got to get after both quarterbacks. Just get out. I mean, just, just go Ten get after back. 
Yeah. This Tennessee defense was not very aggressive uh, last year in this game, and Graham Mertz picked him apart. He's completing 77% of his passes. Yep. Since coming to Florida, he's been very accurate in the passing game. And, and yeah, you know, DJ Lagway is going to play as well, but you know, if I'm Tennessee, I'm, I'm trying to be a lot more aggressive and be more of who you are. I mean, Tennessee's defense at its core is an aggressive unit. Didn't feel like it was that way. That wasn't the game plan a season ago in Gainesville. I think it needs to be this weekend. Yeah, you know, Rob, giving up seven plays of 20 yards or more, was 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 a was an ouch on, on Saturday because well, that that's offense, not what they've seen. And to that offense. Yeah, and listen, I, I thought Green was terrific for a guy who's inaccurate. Yep. I thought he was extremely he accurate. Give him some credit. of those sideline throws. Yeah. Were, were were absolute dimes. Yeah, give him credit. And I thought Bobby Petrino had a good plan. Tennessee's got to limit those big plays. They can't give up those. That was plays. that was one of the most surprising things of the night. Maybe the most surprising thing to me. I mean, besides Tennessee's offense was awful, but I, I mean, you said well, ten of. Of 20, I think it was. If you take it back to 15 yards, it was it was like you know 17 of them. I mean, it was a bunch for for an offense that doesn't do that. Yeah, they got a bunch of bunch of big plays. Tennessee wins this game if what? Uh, t- Tennessee got to run the football. Texas A&M ran for 310 against yeah. Florida. Mississippi State ran for 240. Be who you are. You're a running football team. Allow Dylan Sampson, Deshaun Bishop, that offensive line go run the football. Let your offense build off that. Again, we say it every single week, but. This Florida defense, uh, this rush defense is not good, so take advantage of that. Yeah, I mean, Eric stole it, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm piling on because I saw the 240 rushing yards from Mississippi State and just circled it. I mean, for me, after what we saw from Tennessee's offense, that has got to be what they do Saturday. That's going to take all the pressure in the world off of Nico, get the tempo going. When you get the ground game going, I, I think that's easily the biggest key. Yeah, I think it's encouraging that Mississippi State ran the ball so well because Jeff Levy's the coach, and obviously there's a lot of Art Bryles. Mm-hmm. There's sure. a lot of what they do there, so that's a positive. Now, the question is going to be, what does Florida try to do defensively? Do they change a lot? If you do, if they do, you got to you got to make them pay for trying to do something new in a short period of time if that's what they're going to try to do. I think the other thing, too, is get out of the box. Get out of the gates. I mean, yeah. Arkansas just took the life out of you on the sideline because they held the ball for forever in the first quarter. And then you go out and, and you get a penalty on the first play, and then all of a sudden here you go. And it's this slow build. I mean, they, they, need, they need to get going. I mean, whatever they're doing concept-wise to start with their script or whatever needs to be more effective than it's been the last couple of weeks. They, they've been fantastic since they've been here, but the last few weeks it's been bad. Yeah, it's they, been they tough. Just, just struggling. But a lot of it's been self-inflicted wounds. I mean, you know, you're, you're sitting there going, all right, we'll go tempo. We throw a 14-yard completion. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Got a seven yards downfield. Penalty. Now we're, now we're stop the clock. Can't go fast. Second and 15 or first and 15, here we go. Now we're behind the sticks. Now we got problems. I'm going to say they've got to get Nico confident. I think if, if, if you, you've got to get him some positive traction. Obviously, the other night was not how you wanted it to go. You've got to get him going. Is that through the running game? Maybe. You know, I mean, is that, you know, taking some deep shots early? Either way, the one thing we've learned here, offensively, defensively, we all agree. Tennessee's got to be themselves. Pressure, pressure, pressure on defense. That's what Tim Banks wants to do. That's mm-hmm. who he is. And then, you know, Josh Hyper wants to go fast. At the end of the day, let it rip. Be who you are. And if Florida gets an extra two, three possessions because you end up with a couple of three and outs, it'll be okay. Well, every, That's why you got a good defense. Everybody on your offense has to be committed to going fast. You can't turn it over, and you can't slowly get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. You can say go fast all you want to. They have to play fast. They're not playing fast enough, they even when the opportunity presents itself. When you have an offensive lineman turning to another offensive lineman saying, get up, let's go, let's go, you're not registering, you're not committed to going yeah. fast. Tennessee's got to make that commitment when they don't have stoppages of play with incompletes and penalties and all the other stuff that's bothered them. He is Eric Kane, Rob Lewis, and Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price for the Rocky Top Roundtable.